Hi guys, it's David here from One Step at a Time and today we're going to be talking about how to recover your lost data, pictures, videos, that kind of stuff from a crashed computer. Now there's going to be two sections in this video. The first one is to, I'm trying to show you or I'm going to show you where the, where you can get maybe a repair disk, an ISO file and burn it onto a DVD for your operating system and hopefully um, repair from there that's the first section if that works that's probably the best option and the second option is you in using as you see on the screen here the Hirons boot CD the first part I'm just going to quickly run down how to burn the Hirons boot CD to it um, I think you should have a copy of it uh, regardless that's a fantastic um, piece of software so uh, it'd be always handy to have around if anything ever happens in the future so that's the first section, then I'm going to show you the repair and then I'm going to show you how to do a backup using Hirons Boot CD so you can retrieve all of your data. So, um, Okay, let's get going. Um, I'm going to be using Hirons Boot CD, but um, when I backed up from my old advent, I used Canopix, the Linux, and I just burnt that to a DVD and I ran that in my advent and then I was able to get in the back door, as I'll say, and I was uh, I, I was able to back up all of the files and folders I wanted, all the other shite, like the um, softwares and all that kind of crap that I had just downloaded onto it, so I didn't really care about it. The main thing I was after was pictures or uh, any documents, any kind of work, you'd spent a long time on it. After that, I didn't really mind if I wiped the hard drive after that, so... Um, like I said, you have two choices. You can use the Canopics one, um, or you can download the Hirons Boot CD. I'm going to be showing you the boots, the Hirons Boot CD. So I suppose uh, if I stop waffling now and show you how to do it. So I'm going to leave a link in the description. You're going to go to hironsbootcd.org forward slash download. And if you scroll down to the bottom of it, you're going to get this Hirons Boot CD 15.2 zip. Just um, click on that and download it. Once you're finished downloading, I have it downloaded, so I'm not going to do that. Once you've finished downloading, you want to extract all your files. Once you've extracted all your files, there's a burn cdcc. Uh, it's a, an exe file, or you can go to command script if you like. And um, if you double click on that, and just click run, it'll give you an option to burn. So what you want to do is, I'll just move my other computer out of the way. Um, what you want to do is go into browse and you want to search for that um, ISO file for the Hirons boot. Uh, it's the only one I have, so it's easy enough to find. And then I'm just going to click open. And then in here you can uh, finalize the read verify. Um, you can check it, it takes a little bit longer. I usually check it. Uh, if you don't want to, you can leave it. If it didn't work, you can just reboot it again. What that does is just read verifies that it actually done what it was supposed to. And this is for the speed, so you can change that to whatever you like. I usually keep it at a really low speed. Um, or you can leave it at optimal at the end here. So once you've checked all these and auto eject the disk, I'm just going to say start. And it's going to ask me to insert the blank disk. Just want to see. Yeah, I probably have something already, but I don't mind if I wipe what's on it. And I'm just going to say OK. <clears throat> and it's asking me to raise it. I'm just going to say yes. Um, the DVDs I'm using are DVDs plus RWs, they're rewritable ones. Uh, you could, if you want, just get the DVD plus R, and that would save you um, ever making a mistake of writing over it or deleting, like I just did. So it's writing the image to the disk, so what I'll do is I'll pause it here, and I'll let it do its job, and I'll come back in a second. Okay, it's finished, and um, just say when you take it out of your DVD drive, just make sure you write on it, name it, what it is, so you 
you'll know what it is if you need to use it in the future. So I'm just going to close this down. Uh, okay guys, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there's two options to recovering um, anything you've, you've lost. Um, you don't always have to go down the um, high res boot CD. Um, there is an option to get a repair disc from uh, an ISO file online, so I'm going to leave a link in the description. Um, it is just for Windows, so I'm sorry to anyone that have Macs. I don't know an awful lot about Macs, so I'm afraid I wouldn't be able to help you out much. So, um, Sorry again, this is just for Windows. So um, There's a few ISO files up there you can download. There's Windows um, 32, this one, or 64, or Windows 7, Windows 8. So hopefully one of those will help you. If you download that and burn that to a DVD, um, I'm just going to show you how you can... Um, set up and fix your computer so just pop it in once you've downloaded and burnt it to a DVD just pop it into your drive and then on load we're going to go into our BIOS just to make sure it's um, booting through the DVD drive and not the hard drive so I'm going to click on it and when the option comes up it'll be either F2, F8 or F12 so it's F2 on this computer and then it's going to take us in here to the BIOS and then you want to just on your arrow key over to boot and uh, I've fixed this computer but I'm just going through these steps to show you but normally on it it would be set up like this it would be your hard drive and your CD DVD drive so what we want to do is make sure it boots from this first so what you need to do is it'll just press F5 or F6 until the CD DVD is at the top and then when you're happy press F10 and say yes and it'll switch off and it should take about 10 seconds and it'll reboot but it'll boot this time from the DVD drive and you might get an option up here where it says click any key make sure you press that so it doesn't go into the default yeah, so press any key on your keyboard. And so the Windows is loading files, so what I'll do is I'll pause this here. Well this it can take a little bit of time, so Okay, and as you can see here there's um there's the install window, so it's just pick your language whoever so I'm just gonna say next. next and in here then there's the option to install now but instead of doing that you can actually just come down here and say repair your computer and click that and I found that fixed um, the year I was having I was having OXC 0000E9 so, uh, this fixed it so then I just say next and then I just say the system restore so restore windows to an earlier point in time so uh, you can choose whichever one of those that you want once you're in there and then I just hit the restart button and it will restart your computer and this is one option to try before you do the whole install and it's loading up <clears throat> just remember guys that if this works for you and you get your um, I'm not going to boot up from the DVD now I want to do it from the hard drive so I didn't press any key that time but uh, I was just going to say make sure you um, go back into your BIOS like I showed you earlier and then just revert it back so that it boots up from your hard drive first and not your DVD drive um, just so it's back to normal back the way it was It'll still boot up your system, but it'll tr it'll go through the DVD drive first, and it'll keep bringing that little thing at the top of your screen asking you to press any key. But it's better off just change the BIOS back to the way it was, and it should load up. Everything should be fine now. 
and uh, that's it uh, it's loaded up uh, it's fixed it so if this works for you I'm happy it'll save you doing the second part of this video which is using the high rise um, boot CD and deleting passwords and trying to recover it through a, an external hard drive so if you manage to get everything fixed from here and um, that's fantastic so if you if it worked for you hit the like button subscribe if you like and um if not watch the second part and i see you in the next video i suppose right guys we're here at my um old laptop and here's my irons boot cd 2015 i've just burnt and you should have yours as well it's just picking it in your pop it into your drive and um, on load up <clears throat> we're going to get an option to go into um, I want to go into the BIOS to make sure that it's booting up from the DVD drive and not the hard drive so when you click the on you'll have an option for either F2, F8, F12 depending on your model it's usually written down here in the, in the corner so I'm just going to boot up and when the option comes up uh, it's F2 on this machine, so and I'm going to press F2. It says entering setup, please wait. And we're in the BIOS here. And what I want to do is you want to use your arrow keys and just go across to boot. And as you can see, it boots from the hard drive first and then the CD DVD. So, what I want is I want that CD DVD at the top. So, press F5. And it'll drop the hard drive underneath. I don't know if you can see that. And once you're happy with that, just press F10. And then it'll say save configurations and just hit enter. It should switch off now. And then about 10 seconds, it'll start up again. But it'll boot from the DVD drive this time. Now, we're in the Hounds boot CD and this is its load up screen but um, the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to have to delete the password from your machine so when you log in and you use a password to get in there if you're using an external hard drive to back up all of your um, pictures and so it mightn't let you access them because it'll say password protected so we need to get rid of that first and um, how we do that is we just use your arrow keys and go down to DOS programs and click enter hope you can see that okay with my camera and it just says boot and DOS programs and it'll go through its setup and then we need to go up here to password and registry tools and click enter and then we want to go up to password changer so it's number one on this click that <coughs> and it's just doing it searching and all this data so anyway when it's finished you can see here is it windows partition found one and two and um, yours might just have the one in it so one and Press on two, click enter. The first one was just a little boot. And then it's in what is the path to the registry directory? And we're going to stick with the default Windows System 32 config. We're just going to hit enter. And then down here, then it's giving you option one, two, password reset, or recovery console. So we're going for one. So press 1 in there, hit enter and then it's uh, 1 again for edit user data database and passwords we'll press 1 and just type enter again so hope you can stay seeing that and then here it's looking for the username so if your username is your name for logging in like on this computer the name is Roma so what I want to do is I need to type that in. Now it is case sensitive, so if it's capitals and lowercase, then do that. This is all capitals, so I'm going to just type in all capitals. So, and once that's in there, just hit enter. 
and then it's asking you here one to clear blank user password edit so we're going to clear it so choose one and click enter and then here it says and it's in password cleared so that's it it's um it's done where we want it so what we need to do now is you know, get back into the boot screen so just hit control alt and delete and uh, that'll bring us back into the boot screen so I'll just drop this camera for a sec oh guys it's rebooting back into the boot screen <coughs> Okay, we're back into the boot screen, and this time we're going to go to the mini Windows XP uh, and just click enter. And that'll start loading Windows. So, what I'll do is, if this takes a while, I'll just pause this and we'll be back in a second. Okay, so it's loading up um, Mini Wind XP. Just going to scroll down here. You want to scroll down to this little folder here, and on where it says My Computer, and just click on that, and it'll open a screen. We're going to just Click here to minimize it and then go back into your. I hope this route finds it now because um, we want to. I'm just going to catch it if we just hang on one second. Now you just want to plug in your external hard drive, whatever it is, it's a 500 gigabyte um, hard drive external. So uh, just plug that into your USB port. Get at it. So the other computers in the way. Uh, hopefully, it should load up here on the screen. Yeah, there it is. My F drive, my passport. So what I want to do is I want to open up two screens so you can transfer one to the other easily. So we'll just move this one over here and go back down to your documents again open that I'm going to open this one as my passport so this is my uh, external drive is on this side and then this is my computer my documents on this side so I'm going to open up my D drive local disk double click in that and then down here in the users and um, that's probably the main area you want uh, and when you open up that, it'll have all of your files and folders inside it. So when you click on your username, when it opens up, it'll show you, it'll have all your desktop, or your documents, your downloads, your music. Um, so the best thing to do is just grab this complete user. So just left click and hold on it and then drag it across into the other screen where your external hard drive is and when the plus line is you just drop that in there so I have everything backed up from this from earlier so I don't have to do that again and um, that's how you get your um, that's how you recover any of your data any of your photos videos anything like that so um, I hope it helped guys I hope it gets you your images or your data back if you like the video, click the like button and um, subscribe if you want and I will see you in the next video. Good luck.